Yeah, so going to be talking about service mesh today and how to protect your services using MTLS and doing a little bit of some observability uh, using the service mesh pattern uh, with Kong's uh, Kuma product. Um, let me just go to my next slide here and I can kind of a little overview of what we're going to cover, right? Using MTLS policy to encrypt and secure a service, uh, controlling traffic using our traffic permission policy. So once the once the policy is uh, in place and your traffic secure, I want to be able to control at a granular level, you know, which service inside of, of the mesh is allowed to talk to each other. And then finally, some observability and tracing, so some APM uh, uh, process management inside of GCP, integrating uh, Kuma with Stackdriver. Okay, so those are the slides pretty much that's gonna, we're gonna go over today. I'm gonna go into actual software here, let me quit that. Um, so the first thing I wanna kind of show is the uh, Kuma, Kuma service mesh user. Oh, one more. Sorry about that. I had to do a little book for me. So right here we're running um, uh, Kubernetes uh, in GCP, uh, running Kuma. And so I wanted to show you a little bit of the, the Kuma UI here just to kind of show you what we're doing. Cool. There we go. Let's get the dashboard. All right. So what we have here is the Kuma dashboard that shows you, you know, overall, you know, the configuration of the mesh. Um, and then all of the data planes inside the mesh. Right? So here's all the, you know, all of our different applications. Um, so there's some Spring Boot applications in here. There's some Python applications and they're all talking um, uh, via Envoy sidecars, right? The service mesh pattern indicates that you know, a sidecar for every application inside the mesh is indicated here. If I go to my namespace, you'll see that we have all of my applications We're using Kong as an ingress into the Kubernetes gateway, which then the requests get um, stamped with a, using some Kong plugins with a correlation ID, which allows us to do tracing. And these are the, this is the web application here, which talks to a, a RESTful API, which in turn talks to a database, okay? So the first thing we want to look at is some MTLS, right? So what's the use case? So we have these applications that are talking to a database and we want to um, essentially lock that, you know, secure that so anyone within the organization can, you know, cannot talk to that database using, you know, like SQL commands, things like that. So, so lock that down. So that's what I'm gonna demonstrate here. Um, if I go into my, you'll notice, change one thing. Okay. So if I go, I have here, what I have is a, a, a container that just shows you a, a, a an SQL prompt. I think uh, Google's acting a little slow right now. There we go. It's just quit on me. All right. Watch that again. Pardon me. There was a little bit of an issue logging into the sí, con cuidado. shell. Okay. There we go. Okay. There we go. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to I'm going to log in to the you know, as a, as a developer, I, you know, I'm just go logging into a, uh, a database SQL monitor, right? And as I just type in my password and then do a select star from crew, right? So I have access to this database, right? So I, if I'm a developer, I, you know, I can use that to select all my data. And then, so what I'm gonna do with service mesh is uh, what I can do is I can configure MTLS so you can disable that communication without the applications or people using, you know, without, any, without them knowing it or not, you know, allows a, a DevOps person to configure policy, you know, outside of the application. So if I enable my MTLS certificate on the mesh, you'll notice if I go back to my UI here, you can see meshes, and you'll see that we now have this MTLS turned on. So Kuma manages your certificates. So Envoy can talk to each other uh, only 
certain ones. So now when I try to log into my database, you'll notice I cannot because I'm the this particular container is outside and it does not have an SSL certificate that is allowed to talk. So it essentially just locks it out. So I can make that wine open again. And then you'll notice if I type the right password in, I am back to being able to query that database, okay? Um, and, and, and I'd like to say, if there's any questions that you guys may have, please feel free to interrupt me as I, as I go through this. I'm, I can pivot and stuff like that. So um, does anyone have any questions with what I have done just there? Cool. All right, so the next thing that we wanted to show was, um, so we, we have fine grain control over this too, right? So if I go to the, uh, this is the report. So this, oops. All right. So this is a this is the uh, Spring Boot application that is calling many microservices underneath to produce this um, report, which is a ship's manifest for Star Trek. So we have our crew, our cargo, and our captain's log. Okay. Now, say I wanted to restrict, so maybe a data ent entitlement use case, right? I wanted to control, you know, each individual microservice, you know granularly controlling which one. So I can, by applying a policy, I can control traffic permissions to which containers want to see, uh, have access to each um, other microservice. So I can remove this captain's log um, call from the application by just applying a policy. So I can just say captain's log off NSH or on. So now when I select, I'm gonna delete that policy is what I wanna do. All right, I'm having a little bit of an issue. So let's let's move on. So I, what I want to move on into is to observability and tracing. So <clears throat> with um, Kuma or any serv service mesh, you can integrate into uh, logging and uh, tracing. So we want to do some logging of metrics and uh, application management tracing. Okay. So as I click through this interface, right? So as I call these, you'll know um, there is a uh, a Fluent D process that is running in the background that is capturing uh, uh, logging to um, Zipkin or the stack driver using Zipkin, right? And what you'll see is when I go to the Google Cloud platform over the trace, I can click on any of these, and what you see is a call, right? So this is the overlying, the 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 call to the slash manifest, right? And then each individual call microservice underneath. It gives you, you know, so this call took 25 milliseconds, this call to um, cargo, right, took 33 milliseconds, and this call to crew took 150 milliseconds. So this enables, um, you know, DevOps engineers or application developers to really, um, you know, analyze you know, distributed trace. And then another um, piece of the puzzle here is there's, uh, we're using Kong at the ingress level to um, using a correlation ID plugin that stamps each individual request coming in with a unique identifier. So we can now correlate um, the trace with the logging. So if you have application level logs that are logging, um, you know, different, you know, um, anything that an application uh, for, for doing troubleshooting of your application. So if I can look at standard out, 
I'm going to add that. And then I can search the text payload for that particular UUID. And if I run that query, I can then filter down. Oh, look, I see that that particular call responds to four different requests inside. And then, you know, whatever application level, there's some JSON um, that you can see. And it gives, you know, developers or, uh, you know, uh, DevOps personnel, you know, indications of what, you know, debugging problems within an application, you know, latency information, you know, problems, application level errors. So logging combined with stack tracing is a, is a very invaluable tool uh, for doing this type of thing. Uh, so here, um, I would like to, you know, any questions on, uh, on this? Yeah. This is where the discussion, little discussion could happen. Uh, hi, Devin. Uh, hey. I, have a, I have a question in regards yes. to, uh, you mentioned that FluentD would, uh, you know, push these tracing logs to stack driver using Zipkin, right? Yes. Uh, I just wanted to have a look how that's uh, configured. Uh, just yeah. a, a quick overview. Yeah, cheers, thanks. Yeah, yeah. So the nice thing about um, GCP um, is what it, it comes with FluentD uh, already loaded. And what happens if I go to, so there is a, let me go to my namespaces. And if I go into the cube system, uh, what, what GCP has done is they've given us a Fluent D GCP um, containers. So when you launch that container, what happens is pre-configured to um, ingest all of the standard out from every container. So as you launch containers, that standard out automatically gets um, um, consumed or you know ingested by the, the Google Fluent D process. And then in Kuma, what you do is you apply a policy. Okay, so I'll show you the Kuma um, policy. So if you go to meshes, I'm going to data plane, no, meshes. And I want to go to over, where is it? Traffic trace. Traffic traces. So you'll see here, I configured Kuma in Kubernetes to say, okay, on any service, match any service, and then pass that to the Zipkin backend, which is configured on the control plane of Kuma. So if I go to the control plane and burn meshes, you'll see that here's the tracing backend. So the default backend is my Zipkin, and here's how, where that's configured. So whenever we wanna do a trace, post to trace.sekuma. You know, this is the URL right here. That's the uh, where uh, Zipkin is running. So the, the Kuma policy automatically tacks on all of the open trace, you know, the B3 trace headers onto the request and will forward, you know, uh, post that, you know, into that, this particular URL, which corresponds right here. That's the Kuma trace right there. And this is the Zipkin server running within Kubernetes cluster. Does that make sense, Avanash? Yes. Um, I was just curious on, uh, you mentioned Kuma control plane, right? Uh, yes. As we talk about Istio service mesh, Istio service mesh also comes along with the control plane. Uh, yes. Right? Yes, uh, correct. How, how different is Kuma from the Istio service mesh control plane? Obviously, uh, the Zipkin and the other critical components like the Gali, yeah, yeah, Pilot, standard like, stuff. Yeah, sure. Yeah, is, is, it, um, is, it, is it more or less the same, or is it any different? Uh, you know, under the hoods. So the difference yeah. to me. So under the hoods, right? So, so Istio and Kuma, Kuma are are Envoy under the hoods, right? So I think the difference involves, to, in my mind, is is more of a simplicity thing, right? So Kuma is turnkey. One one of the, the differences, say, is the ability to support multi tenancy. Okay, in a single control plane. Okay. So if I want to have multiple meshes inside of Kuma to support, you know, all different applications, different, I can do that within a single control plane. Whereas I know in Istio, you have to launch many control planes. So it's like one unit. And so you're, so it's less resource intensive. And as a result, you know, less complex. That mm -hmm. is one of the major differentiators uh, in, in my mind between the two. 
Um, STO 10, you know, it, it's a, it's a good tool tends to be comp, but it's, it's, you know, teams, there's a big learning curve, right? Um, Huma is, you know, a, a single person could really manage a mesh within an organization. Um, ah, cool. in that, does that make sense? Does that yeah, help? sure. Fair enough. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, yep. And we now have the ability to, um, do multi-cluster. Right, so you'll notice in this UI, I see remote CPs. So uh, we can now, with Kuma, as of 0 0.6, we can have a single mesh that spans network boundaries. Okay, so I can have a, uh, services in GKE, uh, universal. I could have uh, you know a mesh running in e uh, on EC2 instances, and that could be all part of a single mesh. So a flat topology is no longer necessary. And we accomplish that by we using a, we have a global control plane and local or remote control planes. So you can configure a mesh through the global, global control plane, and then your remote control planes will talk to that global, you know, it's like a hub and spoke kind of architecture. And then once all of the remote um, control planes are configured, then all of the, um, the services within the mesh they only know about their own local remote control plane and that, that um, communication and everything is handled for you and everything is cached. So if the global control plane goes down, it, it doesn't really matter. Um, so it, it's a real nice piece of engineering that our team has, has, has put together. Um, apologies. I may have missed it. Is this specific demo um, available somewhere? Um, uh, mean, uh, the, actually, the actual, uh, the code, and stuff to set it up inside of? Correct, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I am more than happy to share that. It's currently, it's, it's in a uh, GitHub repository, but I'd be more than willing to, uh, to, to make that a public, public available thing. And you guys could try it out. And Excellent, do all that. thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm.